Hey, Brother Bush. Well, how you doing, there, Brother? Good Bush? to see you. Good to see you. Good My to see pleasure. You. The pleasure's mine. Thanks for taking some time out tonight from your practice just to talk about the inner city singers of the South. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to ask you, how did the inner city of the singers of the South get started? Well, I moved to Alabama in 1975. Yes, sir. And in 1977, yes, sir. I, I called my friend, Brother Robert L. Ivory, and he was kind of ready to make a move, too. And, okay. And there was a congregation here available at the time, so I, I asked him if he would come in and look at it and consider it, perhaps, and okay. he did that. And once he got here, having known him before, when I was in Florida, right. for I had a group there uh, called the True Believers, and he also had a group in Florida, and we met up together on a program. Okay. And when I met him, I found out that he was really a songster. Okay. okay. So we became interested in the, in the work of each other. So uh, since I found out that he wanted to make a move, I called him and asked him would he come to Birmingham and check this congregation out, and maybe we, we could get a group started. Okay. And so he did. He moved here, and, and when he did, we looked at some people we had already here. Okay. And uh, we chose, I think, about seven men. Okay. To start this group. Okay. Who, who were the original seven? The original seven consisted of Brother Robert L. Ivory. Okay. And myself, okay. Elijah Bush Sr. Okay. And uh, R Robert MacArthur Ivory, Brother Ivory's son. Okay. Uh, Emmett Roseman. Okay. Barry Taylor. Okay. James Taylor, Carl Smith, and Wayne Williams. Okay. Wow. And I think those were the seven originals. Okay. When you think about the seven originals that you just named, I noticed that there's an overlapping group that formed later called the Birmingham Sunlight. How did the two of them basically um, come to be? Well, actually, yeah, they they grew out of the uh, inner city singers. Okay. You know how it is sometimes you get to a place to where you just want to perhaps maybe be, right. step out for yourself and okay. on your own, and, okay. which we were not against, against yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. And so Brother James Taylor and Barry Taylor and Brother Wayne Williams, they yes, decided sir. to form another group. And, okay. And uh, during that time, then we had to do some uh, replacing yes, sir. Uh, of the members who were uh, leaving the group. Okay. In which uh, we did. Okay. Who'd you add? Well, we added my son, uh, Elijah okay. Bush Jr. Okay. He came in into play. And uh, that was, that was several. But matter of fact, one of my daughters sung with us for a while. Wow. Uh, Yolanda. Okay. Well, God bless her, she's passed on now, but she right. sung with us for a while until we uh, finally got some other men to uh, right. fill the place. Okay. So that that's kind of how we got started off. And, okay. And so now we had the Sunlights right. and the Innocent Singers, which we we always maintain good relationships, right. you know, in the process okay. of our singing and going forth. Great, great. <laughs> This evening, oh, oh, that's the way we came this evening. Oh, we came from the south. This evening, oh, that sounds all right. The 
Take your time if you don't mind. Let the world know where you came from. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me. Going back to uh, the original two, you and Brother Ivory, how did y'all become the dynamic duo, as I've heard you call in times past? Well, see, actually, like I said, there were two groups, uh, the spiritual seven that he had and I had the true believers. We met up on this program down there, and actually I could see his ability, and I guess evidently he observed mine also. So the type of singing that he did and that I did well, I, I knew right away that if we put that together, we would, would become a great duo. And so when he came to uh, Alabama, then we, we started out just that way. Uh, uh, first leader and second leader. And we actually, we, we, we both could sing the, in, the, in the same position. But Brother Ivory, he had this, this very extraordinary high-pitched voice. You know, and, and I was kind of like underneath him to, to feed him, to get him to that particular, you know, uh, a point in his voice range. So once we found that out, we just started working together. Who, who influenced your overall style that you have uh, back then and as well as today? Well, actually, going back, uh, my, my older brothers, uh, they, they had a group. And I believe I can remember the name. I believe the name was Union Jubilees <laughs> long years ago. And uh, I, that was the style that they used. And a matter of fact, uh, uh, they, they put together with my sister and myself and another couple of kids, put a group together back at that time. I was about seven, eight years old, and they would take us around the places. And it just became my style because of what I had heard, and, and I felt very comfortable in so doing. Considering the way groups form and break up, how has the inner city singers of the South stayed together so many years, really so many decades? Well, actually, I, I, I would say I can contribute that to uh, my determination, Brother Ivory's determination, for we have had some people to come and to go. But it was always somebody there to fill that place. And we just never gave up, you know, on the group. We, we sought to find someone to fill that place, and we found them. And the Lord just put things in our, in our way to help us to uh, continue on in this, this ministry. When you say ministry, what would you term, how would you term the mission of the inner city singers of the South? Well, actually, I believe that singing is a part of the program of the Lord. Okay. And matter of fact, uh, singing is a means of teaching. For the Bible does say, you know, we teach one another in songs and spiritual songs, uh, you know, mean giving glory unto the Lord. So it's a means of teaching. And let me, can I share this with you? Uh, that we were in Texas. We were in a concert. There was a gentleman who came there on that night and he heard our singing and he was very, very carried away about the acapella style of our singing. So he talked with us at the end of the program, and he said, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow for the next program, and he did. And, and he became so enthused with this until he was interested in the class, and we baptized that guy. He became a member of the Lord's Church. Wow. So I say, it is a means of teaching, and, and uh, it has, I think it has had great accomplishment across the years. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh,
style of singing, the Edison singers, all the decades that you've been on the road. How has it impacted the Church of Christ overall? Well, actually, uh, you know, when, when Brother Ivory and I got together down in Florida, uh, this type of singing was not hardly known in the Church of Christ, really and truly. And they didn't hardly have any group singing. But uh, we kind of stuck with it, believed in it, and convinced a few people with the scripture, that is, that it was, it was all right, so long as we kept it within the confines of scripture. And, uh, and so it began to grow and to grow, and others would hear it and become interested. And one thing we did down in Florida, we, we, we had a program that was, uh, we had once a month, uh, we would have little groups from across the state would come together in one place with young, almost all young people. And it, it grew from a, so just a handful into close to a thousand people in attendance. And it was, it was really a very successful program. And so it impacted the lives of young people and old people alike. Speaking of that, what advice could you give young people based on your longevity? What advice could you give them spiritually on how to maintain their spiritual focus and make sure that they stay within the Lord as they sing these songs, these a cappella songs across the nation. What advice could you give them? First and foremost, I would say to them, whatever you are doing, do it for the Lord. You know, the good book says, whatever you do in words or deeds, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I try to tell them, make sure what you're doing, you're not just doing it for sure, but you're doing it because you love the Lord and you believe in your heart that it is going to have a great effect and impact upon the lives of others who will hear the songs that you're saying and, and become better people or become a part of what you're doing. 
That's the first thing I, I tell them. And, and I tell them, if you're doing it for the Lord, the Lord will provide a way for you to perpetuate, you know, uh, his cause down through the years. And, and that, those are the type of thing I tell, you know, young people, be real, you know, don't don't be phony, be real. What would you say uh, concerning this type of singing with the bass line, the group singing? What would you say concerning as far as how people accepted it or did not accept it across the brotherhood? Well, actually, there has been some problems uh, regarding that in time of past because uh, people didn't seem to understand. Some people felt that if something sound like something else, it became that. Uh, which I did not agree with. Stuck up. I had some folks to tell me, said, well, whenever I hear the bass now, I said, it sounds like a drum. It sounds uh, uh, like a, a bass uh, guitar. So, well, I, I say to them, you know, you got to realize that the voice came before the drum right. and before the guitar. So I, t I tell them, I don't think I sound like them. I think they sound like me because God put that sound in our vocal cords. And that's the sound we make that come from the Lord. And I tell them, you know, when, when, when I'm singing, the Bible says, in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, God wants the fruit of your lips. And when I'm singing, I'm using my lips, and I believe that God get the glory out of it. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, in case they need some scripture in order to vindicate what I'm saying. Brother Bush, who make up the inner city singers of the South today? Uh, in, the, in the inner city singers, we have, first of all, myself, Elijah Bush Sr., Elijah Bush Jr. We have Robert MacArthur Ivory, Marvin Williams, Chaz Bush, and Brendan Bush. There are six of us at this time that compose uh, the group of the inner city singers. I know that there are a lot of Bushes in the group, though those last two Bush names, who are they to you? Oh, those are my grandsons. Okay. okay. Those are my grandsons, <laughs> yes indeed. We're proud to have them in the group and they are doing a good job and and blending in and helping us to carry on uh, the inner city singers. Bro Bush, I noticed that the inner city singers of the South have a, a beautiful blended sound. When you look out into the Churches of Christ across the land and country, how would you know that an individual is right for the inner city singers of the South? How, how would you know that that individual belong in, your, in the group that you're presently in? Well, the best way in the world to know is to bring them into a rehearsal and, and listen to them sing. <laughs> the, the, the criteria is that you've got to be able to sing. That's number one. And... Uh, you need to be able to sing uh, and give us that sound, that conventional, you know, uh, singing, traditional singing, uh, like the old times. And we bring people in into our rehearsal, listen to them. We've had some to come in and, and they tried for a while and they say, well, no, this is not for me. <laughs> so, okay, we appreciate that very highly. You just have to try them out to see what they can do, you know. I, I hear people sometimes perhaps singing with someone else and it sound good and, and I've had some, I mean, we have some folk out there right now who really would like to come in and I, I think would make, you know, a pretty good member of the group. But the best way in the world to do that is to try them out. Bring them into rehearsal, listen to them sing. Has your daughter Yolanda Dukes been the only female member of the group? Well, she's been the one who has sung with us the most. 
it's, it seems like to me that someone else helped us out a little bit along the way, but I don't recall that maze right now, but, but she, she, she worked with us uh, quite a bit. I believe uh, uh, one of the Irish daughters, I believe Lee sung with us a time or two uh, in some of our programs. Brother Bush, with the history of the inner city singers of the South, who would you say are or were the actual leaders of the inner city singers of the South? Well, actually, Brother Ivan and I, we shared that jointly. Being ministers of the gospel, we were in a position uh, to, to give good spiritual advice and to try to make sure that things were stayed on a, a spiritual level. So we, we shared that, Brother Ivan and I, we did. I was manager, he was co-manager, so we also, we, uh, well, I was a minister, he was a minister, and so we, we, we both shared that responsibility and trying to keep the group together and uh, keep them spiritually minded. Brother Bush, when you look back, I mean, look back, have it, you ever gotten to the point that you want to just say, enough is enough and it's over, you or anyone in the group? Well, now, when you say uh, anyone in the group, now, we, we've had some times when we've had to uh, discipline. Matter of fact, there was a time when we had to let some go, you know. But I don't recall a time when the group as a whole uh, had decided we just need to quit. I think we were always willing to, to, to make that extra effort to keep the group, group going. I don't think we've had that uh, We've ever come to that point where everybody just wanted to just let it go. But we've had to let uh, something go because of the fact uh, some things perhaps that wasn't up to par. If that's I can, I can use that term uh, so far as we were concerned in the group. Brother Bush, concerning the loss of Brother Ivory, what would you like the audience to know about his passing and how it's affected the group? Well, first of all, I, I would say that Brother Ivory was very special to the group and to me, personally. We were close friends and we worked together uh, real well as a team in singing. We miss him because, matter of fact, Brother Ivory, if you knew him, as I said, he had this very special quality for us. And, and uh, it's kind of hard to find people who had exactly the voice he had. His range was really, you know, from baritone all the way to fifth, sixth, and maybe a seventh, if that can be brought in. So we, we, we really missed it about him. He was, Brother I really loved the group. He loved singing. Matter of fact, if you were getting slack in any way, he would come to you let you know, you know, hey, we're getting slack. We need to get things tightened up, you know. And I, I used to tell people, if anybody loves singing better than Brother Ivory, they'd have to eat it because he really loved singing. And so we do miss him very, very much. And he was a great preacher and a great songster. And he was my friend. Amen. Brother Bush, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for everything that you've done for the brotherhood. And thank you so much for being my friend and my minister the time that I've known you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, and the pleasure is mine. I'm so grateful that I had the chance to sit and to share a little bit about my great experience in singing songs of praise with the inner city singers of the South. Thank you, Brother Jeff, for being the person you are. Thank you, Brother Malone, and also you help us for coming and, and sharing with us and, and recording us that we might share with someone else. You are watching the Church TV Network, here live in Birmingham, Alabama.